to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ have you ever really stopped and thought about the excuses men sometimes make for not serving god luke chapter 14 verse 18 jesus said they all with one accord began to make excuses you know friend as we think about excuses is god really pleased with the excuses we sometimes make Stay tuned today as we think more about man and his excuses for not serving God. Welcome to the Gospel of Christ program. My name is Ben Bailey, and we're so glad that you've joined us for our broadcast today. Today's lessons are being brought to you by members of the Church of Christ worldwide. Those members of the Church of Christ in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their worship assembly. If you've got a Bible question or there's something you'd like to study, they'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God together with you. Also, at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your study of the Word of God. You can log on to our website, thegospelofchrist.com, and all our Bible study material is free of charge and available to you. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson, whether on DVD or CD, we'd love to send that to you. You can fill out a media request form from our website, or you can call us toll-free at 1-855-458-3905. On our website, we have a host of Bible study material, including transcripts, study question, question and answers, and a variety of study materials that would help you in your study of the Word of God. Friend, at the Gospel of Christ, we're concerned about the salvation of souls. That's our main emphasis. We're not concerned about your wallet. We're not concerned about hidden agendas. We just simply want to help men and women know the Word of God and to go to heaven. And so as we transition to our study today, we hope that you'll get your Bible out and have it handy as we're going to look to the Word of God together. In Luke chapter 14, Jesus told a parable or a story to represent the pitiful excuses that men sometimes make for not putting God first. Listen to this story, beginning in Luke 14, verse number 16. Then he said to him, A certain man gave a great supper and invited many, and he sent his servants at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. But they all with one accord began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. And another said, I've bought five yoke of oxen and I'm going to test them. I ask you to have me excused. Still another said, I've married a wife and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and reported the things to the master. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in the poor and the maimed and the lame and the blind. And the servant did as the master said to the master, Is done as you commanded, and still there is room. You know, when I think about this story of the master who's opened up the, the wedding feast and all are invited to come and the excuses they made, I think how pitiful even these excuses were. You stop and think about the three excuses that are made here. The first man says, the invitation goes out, come to the supper. Eh, I can't come. Well, why not? I just bought a piece of property and I need to go see it. Now, friend, if, if there was a pitiful excuse, that's indeed one. How many people do you know that buy property without first looking at it? I'm not going to buy property without looking at it. <clears throat> You're not going to buy property without looking at it. How do you know that it's not full of brambles and briars and, and bushes that you couldn't cut down? Any person in his right mind is going to look at a property before he buys it. Well, the second man even gets worse. Um, the invitation goes out again, come to the feast. I can't come. Why not? Bought some oxen. 
I've got to go and test them. Now remember, we're talking about supper time here. We're talking about prior to the invention of the flashlight, in the middle of the dark, a man is going to miss a free meal because he wants to go test oxen. Really? That's your excuse? You can't come to a free meal to the supper because at night you want to go out and see how your oxen work? Again, a pretty pitiful excuse. But the third is the worst excuse of all. The cry goes out to this man, come to the supper. Can't come. Why not? I've just married a wife. Now wait a minute now. I want you to think about this excuse for just a minute. How many newlyweds do you know that can afford to pass up a free meal? Friend, if there were ever a pitiful excuse, that's it. And Jesus knew that. The Master knew that. And so He opened it up for everybody. He's angry because of the excuses that are made to come to this great supper. And friend, the story, no doubt, represents God. God has made His plan of salvation, His uh, of salvation available to all men. Jesus said it, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Matthew 11, verse 28. And that cry and that plea has gone far and wide. And yet, too many times, men make excuses for not serving God. You've heard some of them. I've heard them. I'm too tired. I can't serve God right now. I need to sleep. I've got to stay in on Sunday because it's my only day to sleep. Well, there's somebody else who could probably do it better than I can do it. And a host of other excuses are often offered. Friend, one thing we learn in the Bible is that God is never pleased with man's excuses. Moses tried it. Exodus 3 verse 4, Moses said, Surely you can find somebody better than me. And God said to Moses, in essence, I'll help you out, but you stop making excuses. And so when we think about these excuses that men often make, Saul made a, a horrible excuse. When he offered that sacrifice in the place of the priest that wasn't authorized, Saul said it was the people. And God said it wasn't the people. It was you, it was your pride, and that excuse didn't work with God. And then you've got people like, like Felix and Agrippa. Felix said as an excuse when he heard the gospel preached, Felix said, go away for now when I've got a more convenient time, I'll call upon you. Well, it's just not convenient. Now's not a good time, maybe a little later. Agrippa said as an excuse, almost. You persuade me to become a Christian. Acts 24 verse 25 and Acts chapter 26 and verse 28. And friend, all of those excuses were not pleasing unto God. And so when we think about excuses, let's realize man's excuses will not work with God. Now, I want to think today practically about some of the excuses that if we're not careful, we can find ourselves making for really not putting God first. Number one, and this is one that we hear probably the most, I just don't have the time to really serve God and do the things that need to be done. Uh, maybe elders in a congregation or a work needs to be done and, and the cry goes out for helpers and so many times people say, I'm just so busy I don't have time. Wait a minute now, we all have 24 hours in a day, 7 days in a week, 365 days in a year. Is it really a matter of not having time or not making time? God knows the difference. The blind man said, We must work the works of Him who sent us while it's day. For tonight comes when no man works. As long as we have opportunity and the ability, we need to use our time to serve God. You see, time is going to be very brief for each one of us. The Bible says we've got 70, if we're lucky, by chance, 80 years upon this earth. Psalm 90, verses 10 through 12. What am I going to do for God? Am I going to put God and His kingdom first with the time that I have? Remember, what is your life? But a vapor, peers for a little while, and then it vanishes away. James 4, verse 14. It's appointed a man once to die. Time is running out. And then the judgment. And so, let's ask ourselves, is it really a matter of, of not having time? Or is it a matter of not taking advantage of our opportunity. You see, as Christians, one of the things the Bible teaches us is we've got to take advantage of now. Uh, Matthew 25, you've got the, the foolish virgins. Five were ready. When the master bridegroom came, they went into the wedding feast with him. The five foolish virgins, they weren't ready. And so they went into the, the city to buy oil. And the Bible says that the door was shut and they came back. Their chance was gone. 
they didn't take advantage of their opportunity. They didn't prepare ahead of time. You think of uh, 2 Corinthians 6 verses 1 and 2. Now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. Friend, if I don't learn to serve God now, it's going to be a long, long time in eternity thinking about why I didn't. Matthew 25 verse 46, the righteous shall go away into eternal life, the unrighteous into eternal death or torment. Let's say that I kept making the excuse. I just don't have time. Well, I've got as much time as everybody else, but I keep making that excuse. And then on the other side, I find myself in torment. And I've got all the time in the world to think about why I didn't use my time correctly. Friend, let's think, do we really not have time? Or is that just an excuse we're making because we really don't want to do the things that we ought to? Then a second excuse that sometimes people make is, we let the world and greed and worldliness sometimes get in the way of being servants of God. Uh, again, we reminded of an illustration of an individual who just couldn't get the world out of the way long enough to put God first. That man we think of is the rich fool. Luke chapter 12, verses 15 through 21. He had pre-planned uh, to have a great crop year. Uh, the Bible says he had a great crop year, so much so that as he brought his harvest in, he had to tear down his barns and build bigger barns, and he made preparation for a good crop year, made preparation to build his barns up again, took a lot of time and effort in doing those. And of this man, Jesus said, You fool, this night will your soul be required of you. What kept that man from serving God? Worldliness, greed, and not giving attention to his soul. And friend, it gets in the way of so many people serving God. Can you help with the Lord's work? Can you put God first? What is it that's getting in the way? And too many times, it's worldliness and it's greed. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man that sows, that will he also reap. Galatians 6, verses 6 through 10. And the Bible says worldliness and godliness cannot go hand in hand. Do not love the world or the things in the world. For all that is in the world, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, it's not of the Father, but it's of the evil one in the world. And all that's in it is passing away. But he who does the will of God that's the one that will abide forever. A a am I chasing things of this world so much? Am I trying to get a big job? Am I trying to build a bigger house? Am I trying to have more stuff and junk to the point that God is excluded? That working in the church is excluded? That the, the, the growing of my own soul and the salvation of souls? I just don't have time for that. Friend, if I'm chasing after this world and it becomes my focus, that's a sad life to live because this world and all that's in it, the Bible says, is passing away. Now you think about this. What if you were chasing after those things and you got everything you wanted in this life and then you lost your soul? You wanted a, a bigger house. You wanted a nicer car. You wanted all the money in the world and you achieved every one of those goals. And then you went to hell. Would you think to yourself then, what a foolish waste of time and how horrible those excuses were that I made. Again, friend, we're not saying necessarily that having things or stuff of this world in and of itself is bad. But if those things become my excuse for not serving God, not putting my soul first, and not trying to do the work of the Lord, that's going to be a very sad and pitiful life, especially on the other side. And so the encouragement is let's not put our hope in things of this life. Jesus said in Matthew 24, verses 34 through 36, that the world and all that's in it is going to pass away. But he who does the will of God, he'll endure forever. Yes, the word of God's going to last, but this world, 2 Peter 3, verses 10 through 12, is going to be burned up with a fervent heat, and everything in it is one day going to disappear. And so let's not put our hope on something we know is going to pass away. Then I hear sometimes a third reason, a third excuse people often make for not serving God. And sometimes people say, well, they're just as, it's just too demanding, right? It asks too much of me. It's too hard on me. It, it requires too much time. It's just too demanding of my time and my talents. Friend, I want you to really stop and think about, when I think about this is too much work or this requires too much or I, I'm having to give too much of myself. Can I really say that 
in view of what God has done for me. How demanding, how difficult, how taxing was it for God to send His Son to this world? I beg you by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Listen now, which is your reasonable service? Is it really asking too much of us to do the things God wants us to in the Bible? Not in view of all that God's done for me. He worked tirelessly throughout the seam of time, throughout the history of time, to bring salvation, putting up with man and his excuses over and over again. God worked to bring salvation. He sent His own Son, and His Son came to this earth, lived among men, put up with their excuses then, and died on a cruel cross while men mocked Him and spit on Him and beat Him so that they could have salvation. Look at all God did. Look at all that Jesus did, and friend, how dare I ever say, it's asking too much, it's too demanding for me to serve God. What if Jesus took that attitude? What if Jesus said, no, cross isn't a joy anymore. I'm not going up there. Hebrews 12, verses 1 and 2. What if He said, no, these people are going to laugh at me and mock me and spit upon me. They're not going to appreciate what I did. It's just not worth it. What if He never bore our sins in His own body upon the tree? What if Jesus had the attitude that some people have, they're asking too much of me? Friend, that's just not acceptable when we think about all that God has done for us. Like Christ, we need to have the attitude of giving to God. 1 Corinthians 6, verses 19 and 20 sums it up so beautifully. The Bible says, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? What do you mean? For you are bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are His. Let's have the attitude Jesus wants us to have. I'm going to take up my cross and bear it daily to serve Him. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. You know, sometimes when we think about excuses people make. There are some others that are often made, and, and I understand to an extent some of these things are important. For example, sometimes people let other people get in the way of them putting God first. Sometimes we let family get in the way of serving God. Now, friend, don't get me wrong. God created the family to help man, to be an encouragement, to work along beside each other, and yet if we're not careful, we can elevate our family to a place they don't need to be. Jesus clearly taught us who our true family is. Mark 3 in the verse 35, they came to Jesus and they said, Lord, uh, do you not care that your mother and your brothers are calling to you? And Jesus looked around and saw that as a great teaching opportunity. He looked around a circle at the people there and said, these are my mother and my brother and my sister, whoever does the will of God. What did Jesus teach me there about family? Our true family are citizens of the kingdom with us. Our true family are members of the Lord's church. And let's not let physical, worldly, sometimes heathen members of our family get in the way of us serving God. You know, I hear people say, well, I couldn't make it or I couldn't do this because family came. Wait a minute now. You don't have the correct view of who family is. And if they're your true family, They'll be right there beside you working and striving in the kingdom with you. Sometimes I think people uh, make the excuse, well, nobody will ever know. If I don't do these things or if I don't participate or if I'm not as faithful as I ought to be, nobody will ever really know. I can kind of get away with it. Can't get away with God. The Bible says in Hebrews 4.13, all things are open and naked before the eyes of Him with whom we must give an account. Proverbs 15, verse 3, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the good and the evil. And so let's be careful and not make excuses for not serving God. But then, friend, I want to turn our attention to another excuse, area of excuses that we often hear. And that is sometimes we hear people make excuses for not obeying the gospel. And, and some of these I think people may really be struggling with in their own mind. Sometimes when maybe somebody's been coming to a service or maybe somebody's been going to church all their life and they've never obeyed the gospel or you're sitting down across the table from somebody and you say, you know, we've read these passages today, you've heard this sermon, you, you've studied this in your Bible, why don't you go ahead and be baptized? And someone says, well, 
I'm too sinful. Wait a minute now. That's the very reason Christ came. Christ came because we are sinful and nobody can be too sinful for Christ to take away their sins. Paul said in 1 Timothy 1 verse 15, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Now listen to this. Of whom I am chief. Paul viewed himself as chief of sinners. And I think sometimes people think in their own mind, I've done too much evil. I've been too bad. I've committed these heinous sins and I could never make atonement for those. You don't have to make atonement. And you can never be too bad for God to save you from your sins. That's the whole reason He came. Must you turn from that? Sure. But if you're willing to change, God's willing to wipe all that away. In fact, all of us at one time have been too bad, have we not? Romans 3.23, all of sin falls short of the glory of God. We've all had to deal with the sin problem. The wages of that sin is death. Romans 6 and verse 23, all our righteousness is like filthy rags in God's sight. Isaiah 64 verse 6, of our own, none of us are good enough in and of ourselves. And you, when you've done all things, things commanded you, Jesus said, say, I'm an unprofitable servant that I've only done that which was my duty to do. And so don't say to yourself, I can't obey the gospel because I'm too bad. I'm too sinful. Friend, those are the very people Christ came to save. Then sometimes I hear people say, as it relates to obeying the gospel, they give the excuse, uh, just like Felix and just like Agrippa. Yeah, I've heard the plan of salvation. I know that's what I need to do, and I'm going to do that some other time. I'm eventually going to get around to it. I know I need to do it. It's not convenient now, but I'm going to do it some other time. Do you remember Acts 24, verse 25? Felix said, go away for now. When I've got a more convenient time, I'm going to call on you. I can't tell you the number of times I've sat down with people, studied the Bible, and they said, you know, that's right, but now's just not a good time for me to do that. What do you mean not a good time? Now's the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. There's an old saying, and it's so true. It says, the, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. What about all those people who said, I know that's right. I'm going to obey the gospel, and one day I'm going to become a Christian, and never got that opportunity. They wanted to. Deep down, they probably had some desire to, but they just never got around to it. Wouldn't it be horrible to say to yourself for all of eternity, you know, I was planning on obeying the gospel one day, and now I'm in this place of torment forever because I never got around to it. The saddest words in all the Bible, I think, are found in Acts 26, 28. Agrippa said, almost you persuade me to become a Christian. Can you imagine what it would be like for all eternity to be this close, almost I became a Christian? Friend, almost didn't do a grip any good, and it won't do, do folks any good today as well. And then sometimes I hear people say, well, I want to become a Christian, but I've got to get some of these things straight in my life. I've got to get some things worked out in my life. That may be the case, that a person really needs to turn from sin and take care of certain things in their life. But friend, don't let that be an excuse. Start working on that immediately. Let's say somebody has a, a sin that they've got to make a determination. I'm going to turn from this sin. Start at that point and say, I'm going to repent. Make up your mind. I'm going to turn from that. Maybe there's some situation they've got to remedy. Whatever it is, don't let excuses get in the way of you serving God. You remember Jesus' words. Luke chapter 14, verse 18. They all with one accord, began to make excuses. Let's think about our own service to God. Let's think about where we are right now. Let's be motivated to challenge ourselves and, and really look at our own Christian life. Ask yourself today, am I really serving? Am I working? Am I being as faithful in attending the services of the Lord as I ought to be? Or when those questions are asked, do we begin to make excuses? Do we say, well, my job just won't let me? Wait a minute now. If I've got a job that's preventing me from putting God first, maybe the case that I need to look elsewhere. Well, I've got too many other obligations. 
They need to clear the plate and really focus on what's important. Well, they're just asking too much of me. Wait a minute now. In view of all that God did for us, can God ask too much of us? And so think about our own life. Let's think about, are we really serving God like we ought to? And friend, as we think about excuses, especially as it relates to obedience to the gospel, I want you to consider seriously your own salvation. Have you obeyed the gospel? Maybe you say, well, I've heard the gospel. I know what the gospel is, and I've thought about obeying it. What kept you from obeying it? Maybe there was some excuse that you made. Maybe you said, well, I'm going to do it some other time. Friend, how do you know there'll be some other time? Remember, our life is like a vapor. All we're promised is right now. 2 Corinthians 6, verses 1 and 2 says this, Now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. What do I have promise of now and today? Let's take advantage of what we know now and obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. Friend, that gospel is not hard to obey. The gospel means good news. And here's the good news. Jesus came to the world as our Savior. The Bible says you'll call His name Jesus. He'll save His people from their sins. He lived a perfect life. He died on a cruel cross so that we could have salvation. And He's made forgiveness of sins and the hope of heaven available for every person. Do you believe that Jesus really is Savior? When Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch were traveling down the road, they came to a body of water. And he said, here's water. What hinders me from being baptized? If you believe with all your heart, you may. He heard the message. He believed it. He was no doubt willing to change his life, turn from sin, and turn to God. And that man was baptized into Christ for the remission of his sins. Paul said in Acts 22, 16, Ananias put this statement on Paul. He said, Saul, Saul, why tarriest thou? What's your excuse for waiting? Arise, be baptized, and wash away your sins. Friend, let's stop making excuses. Let's serve God. Let's put Him first. For God does not and will not accept man's excuses. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wife. This is the Gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll-free at 1-855-458-3905 or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111. This is the Gospel of Christ.